All right, ladies and gentlemen, uh, welcome back. Uh, today, uh, we're going to talk about the Screen Actors Guild nomination uh, predictions, final predictions for uh, who's going to get in tomorrow for the Screen Actors Guild. Before we get to there, though, a couple of things. Uh, first of all, thanks to everybody for uh, watching uh, my video yesterday on the Golden Globe nominations, the live reactions. Uh, it's uh, up to 500 plus views at this point. The, uh, that set a record for my channel for most views uh, within, uh, you know, the first two days to get up to that many, that's, uh, I've, I've never seen that before. So thanks everybody for, uh, uh, for checking into that. And, um, uh, also, um, let's see, before we get to the Screen Actors Guild, um, uh, there were a couple of topics actually from the Globes yesterday that uh, a few, uh, conversation starters have started, uh, to really pop up since then, um, that I wanted to just address, like, really, really quick. I mean, not I don't want to take up way too much time here, and I don't want to, because these are kind of some hot-button issues, so um, so I don't want to get myself into too uh, too high of water here, or, you know, have my head, you know, have my head under the water or anything. You get you get what I mean. Anyways, but yesterday, uh, well, the big thing everybody was talking about yesterday was, um, I mean, aside from the big sick not getting any nominations, which I was completely shocked at, and I didn't feel was deserved. I thought it was, you know, definitely deserved to be one of the five best comedy films of the year. Kamel Nanjiani is probably, I mean, he's the breakout star in the comedy world this year for sure. Um, and uh, Holly Hunter, I think, uh, is, you know, has given one of the best supporting performances of the year so far, uh, from what I've seen at least, uh, in The Big Sick as well. So to see those three uh, uh, aspects and nominations left out of the Globes, I thought was, was really, uh, really too bad. And I think, uh, as I've said many times yesterday, I think they missed the boat on that one. That's that's on them. Uh, they I, either they just didn't get it, or there just wasn't enough room for it in each of the categories. But oh well, uh, you know, there's nothing we can do about it now. Uh, in the meantime, though, there was a couple other things. Um, another one that uh, everybody brought up was all the money in the world. We talked about it a little bit, of course, yesterday. But um, there was this groundswell of people uh, online, and you know, I kind of I kind of hinted at it as well. I think yesterday, and that was. Um, Maybe these nominations are just in reaction to everything that's happened with uh, the Kevin Spacey debacle and uh, and having to replace him and uh, and their decision to uh, to replace him. And I thought about it and I'm like, well, okay, if you're gonna do that, you know, put yourself in their perspective, in their shoes for a minute here. Okay, so you have a case like that, you know, where one of the biggest stars in your movie, all of a sudden, he's the last person you want to have anything to do with. Okay, who are the three people you got to get in touch with? aside from studio heads, to make sure this goes through. But number one, you got to make sure you got a replacement actor. Hmm, okay, Christopher Plummer, he got nominated. Number two, you got to make sure your director's on board and your director wants to do this. Hmm, Ridley Scott got nominated. And number three, you got to make sure you got your key actors on board who can come back and reshoot the scenes. One of them was Michelle Williams. Hmm, she got nominated. So, I mean, and that could be, you know, the only reason that they got nominated was because of the, the thing, you know, and it's kind of a... Um, a situation where the Globes are like, we don't, you know, we want to show our support for the downfall of all these sexual predators who have done, you know, so many unspeakable things over the years. And, um, you know, and that could be the only reason they got nominated, and it could be all political. But then again, they did nominate Jeffrey Rush over in the TV category, uh, despite the fact that he's had uh, some accusations coming up against him lately. So, you know, there is a bit of that... Uh, um, um, hypocrisy there uh, ever so slightly and at the same time yeah it could be all political but then again uh, as I think I said yesterday they're the Globes and I would suppose maybe a couple SAG voters will see uh, how Ridley Scott did it but um, maybe a few SAG voters have also seen it too but Globes are like the only people who have seen it so far and that we know of at least um, so um you know, it could be a case of they're the first ones to see it. They're the first ones to acclaim it. Uh, that could be it. And, you know, uh, uh, the movie comes out here in, a, uh, what, a little over a couple weeks. And then Christmas Day, they pushed it back to. We'll see when it opens. I mean, maybe it is one of the better films of the year, one of the better directed films of the year. Maybe Michelle Williams does give one of the best performances of the year. Maybe Christopher Plummer, just, you know, even though he only uh, got, you know, on such short notice, maybe he did deliver one of the five best performances in the supporting category this year. Uh, we're just going to have to wait and see. Okay, then, of course, the biggest hot-button issue of them all was Best Director and how you had, uh, uh, you know, a year for diversity in directors where you had D. Reese, you had Greta Gerwig, you had J uh, Patty Jenkins, um, 
uh, Jordan Peele. Um, I think there was there was one or two names otherwise, like uh, Catherine Bigelow. They were throwing around too. That um, that none of them were nominated uh, for the best director race. And again, the, uh, it, for me personally, I can't speak on all of them because I've seen Lady Bird, and I thought, uh, as I mentioned yesterday, I think uh, multiple times. There are a few sequences in Lady Bird, like a few of the montage sequences toward the end, and there's one scene in particular with uh, Laurie Metcalf uh, that's in, I think it's her last scene, actually, in the film. Yeah, it is her last scene in the film, uh, that I think is one of the best directed scenes of the year, uh, if not the best directed scene of the year, absolutely. Um, so, and I, I put her into my predictions. I thought, uh, you know, this, in spite of myself, I took Steven Spielberg out. And I said, you know what? The Globes don't always go for Spielberg. Like they didn't nominate him for Bridge of Spies. They didn't nominate him for War Horse. You know, so they leave him out uh, from time to time. So I thought, you know, the post, you know, is hitting a little late. And obviously, they they loved it more than I thought they they would. But um, you know, it's hitting a little late. You know, Spielberg doesn't always get in. You got somebody like Greta Gerwig who's on a full court press here. Uh, you know, with all the great publicity the film gets, plus until yesterday, I think, or Sunday, whatever day it was, it was up to 100% on Rotten Tomatoes. It was, you know, one of the best reviewed films of the year and everything. So that was kind of the reason I put her in was because I thought they were going to go for it. And I also thought Lady Bird was also going to do well with a supporting actress, lead actress, screenplay, and picture nomination. So I thought, well, I'll round it out to five nominees. But, you know, it wasn't wasn't the case. Um, anyway, so as far as, you know, are they deserving or not? Well, I definitely think Jordan Peele... Uh, just from a standpoint of the film being so good, uh, I'm usually, you know, when it comes to like direct directorial achievement and stuff, usually I'll reserve one spot in my personal list for that. So um, like the year of The Revenant, even though The Revenant was not one of my 10 best films of the year, I do think that uh, Inuritu was one of the five best directors of the year just because of everything going on in the film. And I do think, in my personal opinion, I think Martin McDonough deserves to be on that list. I think that um, Jordan Peele deserved to be on that list from what I've seen so far this year. Um, God, I mean, I could go through the list here, but just, yeah, that's just naming off a couple there for sure. But uh, the problem I think we have here in some cases, as my heater comes on, uh, is that sometimes we have a really, really crowded field. We're seeing that this year in the original screenplay category at the Oscars, and it's, it's getting tough to dwindle it down to five nominees. You know, because we've got, you know, probably 10 or 11 films uh, that have a screenplay that are worth talking about for being in the conversation for a possible nomination. So that makes it tough on everybody to dwindle that down to five. And the same goes with director this year, as we're seeing now. And uh, for me personally, uh, Wonder Woman, uh, we'll get into Patty Jenkins now. The thing is, um, I think people are wanting her to be nominated because she's a female director and because the film did so well, I don't think, uh, and I, I, I don't know, it's just from the few people I've heard from, nobody is really talking about how she deserved to be nominated for the work. They're all talking about she deserved to be nominated because she's a female director. Uh, another thing, too, which I happen to agree with is there was such a lag in her uh, filmography there where, you know, this is her first, uh, Wonder Woman is her first feature film directorial job since Monster back in 2003. And since then, she's only done some television stuff. So that's a case where I'm like, okay, well, yeah, I'm not reserved. Yeah, I, I agree with you there that that shouldn't have happened. So that's something you can celebrate uh, in that too. But for me personally, Wonder Woman, I enjoyed it, but I don't think it's one of the best films of the year. It's probably not even my top 20 or 25 films of the year. Um, it's definitely not one of the best directed films of the year, just at a you know directorial standpoint. I don't think so. So... And for me personally, the politics of it, when I'm determining my personal picks, the politics of it really don't play in too much. Not always. Um, so, yeah, for me personally, I didn't put her in because I didn't think she deserved to get in on just the merit of the work. Now, of course, the merit of the politics of it would have been nice to see her or Greta or both of them or maybe Dee Reese or Catherine Bigelow get in. It would have been nice. Yeah, it would have been nice to see female represent uh, representation there in the direct race. Sure, it would have. But I I don't know. When it comes to, for me personally, when we're talking like deserving and, uh, you know, that they got it wrong without them being in it, um, no, I disagree. You know, I, I just happen to disagree with that. But 
Um, and I think in some degrees, I think we would have had the exact same conversation if, you know, let's say both uh, Patty Jenkins and Greta Gerwig got in for director. I think there would have been some people saying, but, uh, you know, uh, let's take Ridley Scott out of it because nobody's seen the film. But, let, you know, there would have been some people that said, hey, but The Post is one of the better films of the year. And some people do think that. I haven't seen it yet, of course. But, uh, you know, I think we would have had the same conversation then. And, uh, you know, I, I think it was it was a conversation we were going to have regardless because there are so many uh, contenders this year in the best director race. So, um, yeah, I don't want to get myself into too hot water here. And I haven't seen Mudbound either, so I can't speak on D. Reese's work as a director. But again, it would have been nice, yeah, to see a female African-American director nominated, maybe just for the sake of saying we had a, an African-American female director nominated. But uh, it just comes down to the work, I think. For me personally, when I'm determining who I think deserves a slot and who deserves one of the uh, the five, it, it definitely comes down to how did you, you know, how was the work? You know, did you do it? You know, did you do a great job direct uh, directorially? And obviously, I think there are some people that do think Patty Jenkins just on the work of Wonder Woman does deserve a slot just on the work. And the same goes for Dee Reese. The same goes for Catherine Bigelow. The same goes for Jordan Peele, uh, which I agree with. Yeah, I'm in that camp. And the same goes with Greta Gerwig, which right now I'm in that camp, too. But I haven't seen everything. So I reserve the right to uh, check that off later when I do see some of these other films like Call Me By Your Name, Shape of Water, The Post. Um... I haven't seen Darkest Hour yet, so maybe that might be one I enjoy. You know, I don't know, because I haven't seen them. So, uh, yeah, for now I can say, yeah, that, that Gerwig, Jordan Peele, Martin McDonough, um, I'm trying to think who else I think deserves a slot. Um, I don't know. Uh, I, I don't know off the top of my head right now, but, um, but yeah, those are some that I would personally say deserve it just based on the work. But I think when we do determine who I predict, though, that's a different matter. And I do think the politics do play into it there. So I thought maybe the politics would play in to get at least Greta Gerwig nominated. But, you know, things turned out as they did. Okay, so I wanted to just, uh, we didn't really talk about that way too much yesterday. So I wanted to bring that up just to share my perspective on that. Okay, so now that I've lost about half of you, I'm sure. Uh, well, I don't know, maybe. I don't know, maybe you guys agree with me. I don't know. But um, uh, we're now, now let's get into SAG stuff. I, you guys have been waiting too long. Let's, let's go ahead here. Uh, all right, so... Uh, starting here with uh, the top category for Best Film Ensemble. Uh, let's see, the five I have getting in, uh, again, I'll try to get these. I try to get these in alphabetical order when I do them here. So I have Call Me By Your Name, Mudbound, The Shape of Water, Three Billboards Outside Ebbing, Missouri, and The Post. And um, as far as why each film's going to get in, I can quickly go into that. So I have Three Billboards actually out front as the front runner right now, just because I do have it winning Best Picture still at this moment. Uh, we'll see. I mean, uh, I might have to, I'll do some reevaluation on my Oscar predictions once we get SAG out of the way here for nominations. Um, I think it's in because, you know, you've got Frances McDormand, who's worked with a lot of people. You've got, um, Woody Harrelson, who especially in the last couple of years has worked with a lot of people, and he's given really great performances, including in Three Billboards, for sure. Uh, Sam Rockwell, who's worked with just about everybody. Peter Dinklage, a huge television star, especially with Game of Thrones. And John Hawks, who, again, is a great character actor who's worked with a lot of people. You got Lucas Hedges in there. Uh, Caleb Landry-Jones, who, of course, from Get Out fame earlier this year, played the brother in that. Um, and there's a couple other ones in there, too. Um, uh, who's it? Abby Cornish is in there. Um, uh, who else was in it? Shoot. I um, can't remember right now. But yeah. but, yeah, there's a lot of great, talented people in there who have worked with a lot of people in the industry. So I think that's why it gets in, uh, on top of being a... Uh, Best Picture uh, major contender at this rate. Then you got The Post, which I think that's an obvious one. I mean, come on. You got Streeps. You got Hanks. You got that supporting cast from, I mean, some of the, you know, uh, greatest uh, working character actors and actresses in the business right now. Uh, I mean, just about everybody in Hollywood, it seems, is in this movie, or a lot of them at least. So, um, yeah, that one gets in no problem, plus it's Best Picture status. Uh, I'm putting Call Me By Your Name in, too. Um, because, yeah, again, you've got uh, some, you know, really lauded performances this year from the film like Timothy Chalamet, uh, Army Hammer, Michael Stuhlbarg. Um, really, those are the main three. But, uh, you know, a lot of, you know, some of them are, are definitely, I think, picking up uh, some of the critics' awards like Timothy. I think he's actually won more than Gary Oldman and a few of the other ones at this rate. So, um, yeah, I think he's, uh, that's definitely a big factor in it, too. And, uh, yeah, again, it's kind of like um, a few other films this year like uh, Lady Bird and Get Out. 
where there's really nobody who's pushing up against the movie and uh, and hating it. I mean, there's nobody really out there who says, oh, Call Me By Your Name is the worst movie of the year, or it's, oh, it's so overrated. You know, Nobody really has a bad thing to say about it. So I think that helps it there. Shape of Water I have getting in because, man, it just, it's overperformed, I think, in the last couple of shows. Like, uh, Critics' Choice, I didn't see it getting 14 nominations. Uh, Glows, I had it in for six. It got seven nominations yesterday. So that one is doing extremely well. Um, and I think, yeah, again, it is, you know, in its best picture status, I think it's definitely in the top uh, bunch there. And then I'm putting in Mudbound because it's uh, really the the SAGs are the probably one of the more diverse groups when it comes to their nominees every year. And, um, you know, having a, a largely African-American cast mixed in with uh, some, uh, you know, Caucasians in there, too, uh, is good. And then plus it's a Netflix film. We saw Beasts of No Nation got nominated a couple of years ago. So that's why I'm putting that one in. And really, I think of these, though, probably the weakest link, though, is probably Call Me By Your Name, maybe because it is uh, it did underperform, I think, at the Globes yesterday, missing out on director and uh, and on uh, the screenplay category. Um, so yeah, those, uh, those are the five I have getting in. Now we could see, uh, there's a good number of other films that I think have a chance of getting in. Uh, Lady Bird, I did have Lady Bird in at first, um, clear back, uh, probably in October I put it in, because I looked at the poster, and the poster has all these great names on it, like Saoirse Ronan, Laurie Metcalf, Tracy Letts, uh, Lucas Hedges again, Timothy Chalamet again, uh, you have, uh, Stephen Henderson, uh, from, you know, from Fences last year, and he did, you know, uh, Manchester by the Sea, and he's, he's been in a lot of films recently, and again, he's somebody who's worked with just about everybody in the business, uh, Lois Smith is in there, um, I'm missing a couple, but, uh, yeah, there's a lot of great character actors in there that um, that everybody or a lot of people have worked with, especially Laurie Metcalf, you know, who's mo maybe more known for her TV work uh, through the years there. Definitely since the SAG voters, a lot of them are on the TV side too, so we have to consider that. Um, it's it's a possibility, and it's, it's one that um, I'm not betting on it right now just because it is five slots, but I would not fall over of shock if it got in tomorrow. Uh, Get Out, I have in here, believe it or not, three or four months ago, I would have said there's no way in hell Get Out gets nominated for uh, Screen Actors Guild of all places. But you know what? This is it. I mean, if this gets in, if Get Out can get into the film ensemble category, it, that's when I get one over. Because right now I still don't have it in, on my uh, best picture list uh, at the Oscars. If it can get into SAG, that's when I'm convinced. You know, getting into Globes, I think since it is in the comedy category, um, you know, arguably, of course, uh, there's always an argument to be had about that. But um, since it got in there, you know, that's that's a good strong start for it here. Plus, it's really getting lauded a lot by a lot of the critics groups, which didn't particularly surprise me. I mean, it is, uh, what is it, 99% still, I think, on Rotten Tomatoes. So I think that, Lady Bird, Call Me By Your Name are some of the best reviewed films of the year. So that didn't really shock me with the critics groups, but... Uh, I'll tell you what, if it can get in, and you have to remember too, you got like Bradley Whitford, who's a legend in the in the film community. He's in The Post uh, also this year. He's, of course, done great work in film and television before, especially television. And uh, and really, he's been working it a lot lately in a lot of other films, uh, and he's always, he's always great. So that's one there. Uh, Catherine Keener's another legend in there, in the supporting cast. Um, you've got... Um, uh, Daniel Kaluuya, who's really big on the scene now after getting into Best Actor for Comedy and Musical yesterday with the Globes. And um, and then also the fact that Jordan Peele is the director, I think, really helps. Because there's this little show he did. You might remember it. It's called, uh, uh, um, you know, uh, Key and Peele. Uh, so uh, if that's one. Definitely when we talk about the TV voters, that's one. Maybe they swap that one in for Mudbound, or maybe it takes uh, Call Me By Your Name slot. Uh I'm telling you what, it's a possibility. Now, again, I'm not predicting it right now, maybe because it is a little bit, you know, there's still some uh, people that are a little biased against it because of its horror uh, vibes and everything. So I think that that definitely uh, hurts it there. But uh, you know what? It's um, it's one to consider, I think. And I'm not, you know, I'm uh, definitely for anybody else who's predicting it, uh, I, I understand why for sure. And uh, I could end up really, you know, uh, hitting myself over that one for not predicting it. Uh, let's see, a couple other ones here. Now, I think tomorrow, because I don't have Dunkirk getting in, as you can tell. And, you know, I've been harping on this for uh, over three months now. 
But guys, Dunkirk is not going to win Best Picture. It's it's just not. Now, I think if it was really, 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 really at the top of everybody's list, despite, you know, in spite of all the other great little independent films that have come out here in the last few months, despite all the other great films that have come out throughout the year, if it was really on the top of everybody's list, no questions asked, no quarter, it's going to win Best Picture, no, you know, no interference or anything, it would have won a lot more critics groups. And uh, I think I lost my camera there for a second. Sorry, if that if that skipped, uh, uh, sorry about that. But um, but yeah, if it's going to win Best Picture, you know, and be on the top of everybody's list, it would have won New York, it would have won LA, it would have won all these other ones, National Board of Review, it would have won everything in sight if it was really, 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 you know, no questions asked, the Best Picture winner. Because it's not, you know, and I, I didn't expect it to. I, I'll be fair. I didn't expect it to do that. Um, that's definitely something that you have to consider. And then also, what was the one mistake everybody made last year that we all really just completely shot ourselves in the foot with and didn't even pay attention to uh, with, um, with the Screen Actors Guild? There's this little movie called La La Land that did not land one of the five slots for outstanding cast. And that's, as we've seen, essential. Essential if you're going to win Best Picture. Every movie since Braveheart, Braveheart's the only exception, and that was actually, uh, coincidentally, the first year they had that outstanding cast uh, category at SAG, is uh, every other Best Picture winner has at least been nominated at SAG. They don't have to win. As we saw last year, Moonlight did not win, but it still won Best Picture. Um... American Hustle won, uh, and 12 Years a Slave lost here, but it won, uh, 12 Years won at, uh, Best Picture. Uh, Spotlight and, uh, Birdman won, uh, just a couple of the recent examples there. So sometimes, yeah, the Best Picture winner is also crowned here at SAG, too. But, I mean, and despite the fact that, yeah, you've got Mark Rylance, you've got Kenneth Branagh, you've got Killian Murphy, and, uh, Tom Hardy, and a few other recognizable British names in there, uh, who've, you know, who've worked with a lot of people over the years, for sure. Uh, Despite of that, and despite its best picture status, I think tomorrow is when everything comes crumbling down for Dunkirk. Now, I do think there is a stunt category ensemble, uh, a stunt ensemble category, sorry, if I can get over my dyslexia for a second there. Uh, and I think Dunkirk is, uh, I mean, 100% going to get nominated there. It'll probably win, too. Um, let's see. And speaking of that category, I don't have official predictions for it, but... Uh, I think there are, from the trailers and stuff we've seen, the post does have a little bit of footage of, uh, of Vietnam, so that, that one might be eligible there. Um, let's see, I think Darkest Hour has a couple war scenes. That might slip in. Uh, Detroit is another one this year, because they always go for a weird one. Uh, that might have a little bit of love there. Wonder Woman, I think, has a good shot. Um, i trying to think here. Uh, Greatest Showman, uh, with, from all the acrobatics and stuff, that might get a, sun, a stunt... Uh, nomination there uh let's see did i say logan yet logan is a possibility baby driver i see as a possibility um uh, maybe blade runner gets a little love for that's for the stunt category um uh, yeah i think that's about it um yeah yeah let's leave it at that so those are the few to consider that i don't again i don't have official predictions there but i know dunkirk has has got to get in there if it doesn't even get in there then we know it's really really in trouble but uh but yeah, I think tomorrow is when all the Dunkirk love for Best Picture ends, I think. And uh, plus, uh, we have so many smart people uh, from Gold Derby and from IndieWire and uh, Vanity Fair and all these other critics uh, and uh, movie pundits who are still betting on Dar uh, Dunkirk to win Best Picture uh, who are so smart. And I don't understand why, again, they're not seeing this. I mean... The writing's on the wall here, folks, and we didn't see it last year with La La Land, and I'm as guilty of that as anybody else is, for sure. But, I mean, what, you know, have we forgotten so easily? And um, and I think that's something I think we're all going to, that's going to be a wake-up call tomorrow. But if it does get in, if Dunkirk does get in tomorrow, if it magically finds one of those five slots, okay, then, then I, you know, then, okay, take back everything I said today. Because if it does manage to get in over something like Shape of Water or over Mudbound or over Call Me By Your Name, uh, any of those, like, and say Dunkirk gets in, okay, that's that's when we know, okay, so it is here to stay. Uh, that's when. But uh, but otherwise, I, I just don't see a scenario where it, where it gets in. Okay, uh, one or two more here kind of oddball picks that can get in sometimes. Like, I thought uh, Ansel Elgar was an oddball pick, but he got in yesterday, so... 
Uh, just to name a couple of, a more off here. Uh, actually, three more. Let's leave it at that. So the Big Sick. Now, I know it got zero nominations at the Globes yesterday, but if it wants to rebound in a big way and show that it is still in the list here, because it got into National Board of Review for one of the best films of the year, if I remember right. It also got uh, one of the AFI lists for best films of the year. So it does have some support uh, going for it still. And it did get a few uh, critic uh, Critics' Choice nominations too, I believe, including Holly Hunter, which was good. Um I think it's it's got a big enough ensemble there. You got Ray Romano, Holly Hunter, uh, Zoe Kazan. You know these are people, especially Ray Romano, such a big TV star, of course. Uh, that definitely helps. Um, Kumail Nanjiani uh, is also on Silicon Valley, so he's another TV star. Um, you know, plus it's another one. You know, as I said, the SAG voters sometimes they go for the diverse films, and this one it's got a lot of diversity in it, and uh, so they might go for that one. Uh, it's a possibility. I, Tanya is another one. Uh, even though it's really just down to Margot Robbie, Sebastian Stan, and Allison Janney, uh, really the big names above the title uh, for its uh, really ensemble caster, but Allison Janney, a huge television star. Uh, Margot Robbie, a huge uh, movie star nowadays. It's it's a possibility. Uh, and then actually, well, uh, I didn't, uh, well, I mentioned it earlier for the stunt, but Detroit, um, you know, again, it didn't really rebound yesterday, but that's another big, diverse ensemble. They're uh, could get some love. I mean, I don't know if it'll be enough to get one of the five slots for, uh, for best cast, but, uh, I think, I think we'd be remiss without mentioning it at least. And then downsizing too is another one where you look at the poster, you're like, okay, Matt Damon, Christoph Waltz, Hong Chow, uh, Jason Sudeikis, Kristen Wiig, uh, even, uh, Laura Dern and Neil Patrick Harris are in there too. Margot Martindale, who's a big favorite of, uh, screen, uh, uh, Screen Actors Guild. Even though uh, she is in the trailer, but I think that's her only scene. But uh, but yeah, that that's another one where it's a huge ensemble cast to uh, think about there. Okay, let's move on now. Uh, for Best Actor in a Leading Role here, uh, the five nominees I have, again, I'll try to get these as close as I can in alphabetical order here. Uh, uh, Timothy Chalamet for Call Me By Your Name, James Franco for The Disaster Artist, Tom Hanks for The Post, Daniel Day-Lewis for Phantom Thread, and Gary Oldman for Darkest Hour. Yeah, I think these I think these are going to be the five that get into the Oscars, except maybe Tom Hanks. Maybe Tom Hanks uh, gets kicked out um, in favor of somebody like Jake Gyllenhaal or uh, possibly even Daniel Kaluuya. Um, let's see who else here. Uh, maybe Denzel gets a little love here tomorrow, too. Um, I'm trying to think here. Yeah. This one, it's starting to really wheel down to, uh, you know, because I think earlier in the year we were talking about how there was a whole bunch of Best Actor uh, possibilities. I think that we're starting to truncate the list a little bit now. But, uh, yeah, Tom Hanks getting in yesterday was, okay, that's a sign to me. Okay, maybe maybe he is one to consider now. So I booted him out, uh, and then when Jake Gyllenhaal missed yesterday for Stronger, that was like, oof, okay, maybe that one uh, is done. Because, and I mentioned it uh, through the year here, but, you know, terrible box office reception. Uh, it was a great critically recepted film, for sure, and he gives a magnificent performance in the film. And uh, truly, you know, it's, it's a, a, a physical transformation to get into the character uh, that he plays there. Um, but uh, it came out in September, too. And it, it's that's a long ways off. So uh, we'll see uh, if uh, maybe he can rebound at SAG. It's a possibility. Okay, moving on to the leading ladies here. Uh, the five nominees I have are Sally Hawkins for The Shape of Water, uh, Frances McDormand for Three Billboards, uh, let's see, who's alphabetical? Uh, Margot Robbie for I, Tonya, so I'm trying to get these alphabetical. Saoirse Ronan for Lady Bird and Meryl Streep for The Post. Uh, these are the same five I have at the Oscars, and um, yeah, I think that's all I got for that one. Uh, I mean, we could see some love for Jessica Chastain. Uh, she didn't get in for Miss Sloan, so I think that's a similar case here. Judy Dench, uh, I think Victoria and Abdul, another one that came out in September, where a lot of the buzz, I think, is going soft on that one. It did do very well at the box office, but uh, um, I don't know. I think the voice, uh, the noise has gone soft. Another one is Emma Stone, Battle of the Sexes, came out in September, kind of, you know, had its moment of fame, and now it's starting to really uh, detract there. So, yeah, those are the five I have there. I think that's, yeah, that'll probably be one of the easiest categories uh, tomorrow. Okay, for Best Supporting Actor, uh, the five nominees I have are Willem Dafoe for The Florida Project, uh, Army Hammer for Call Me By Your Name, Richard Jenkins for The Shape of Water, Jason Mitchell for Mudbound, and Sam Rockwell for Three Billboards. 
Okay, as we've said before, Willem Dafoe, he's got the Oscar at this point, too. I think he's, uh, again, I, like we saw yesterday with the Florida Project at the Globes, I think this is the only vote it gets uh, tomorrow would be for Willem Dafoe. Now, I think at the Oscars, I think Florida Project has enough passion behind it to be a Best Picture nominee, but um, I don't know. that It might be a, um, a contender, too, and maybe director, but we didn't see uh, Sean Baker get in yesterday, either. And original screenplay is way too packed, I think, for that one to get a slot there. Um, I don't know. Maybe it pulls off a miracle and gets like a film editing or something else. But uh, we'll see. Uh, maybe Willem Dafoe ends up being the only nominee for the film. But we'll we'll have to wait and see. Otherwise, the other uh, three of the other ones here, Army Hammer, Richard Jenkins, and Sam Rockwell, are um, uh, were all at, at uh, the Globes yesterday. I think they're, uh, you know, no surprises, no qualms there with them. Uh, the only thing, I did not originally have Richard Jenkins getting in at the Oscars for Supporting Actor, and I have him in for the moment here uh, at the Oscars as well, but um, I think if he gets in tomorrow, that's when I'll, I'll really, really solidify there, because I was a bit uh, a bit shaky on him and Octavia getting in for Shape of Water, but I think if they both get in tomorrow, then yeah, I think that, that seals up one of their slots for sure. And I'm going with Jason Mitchell for Mudbound, because I think Mudbound will not be uh, just a, you know a film ensemble and nothing else nominee. Uh, I think it'll get multiple there. Uh, let's see, as far as other potential nominees, we saw Michael Stuhlbar get left out yesterday for Call Me By Your Name. Uh, he is also in The Post, and he's also in uh, uh, Shape of Water as well. So he's in a lot of films this year. And I think, yeah, at this rate, since I do have both Call Me By Your Name and, um, and Shape of Water in, I, I see him being a double nominee in that case. But I don't see him being a triple nominee. I don't see him pulling them Herschel Ali from last year. Where he was a individual nominee for his work in Moonlight and then part of the cast of both Hidden Figures and uh, Moonlight. Uh, I don't see Stuhlbarg being the triple nominee this year. Uh, let's see. Really, the only other one I can think of here, uh, other than, of course, uh, the real surprise yesterday was Christopher Plummer. But again, I don't know if they got that one screened in time for SAG because... Um, from all the news reports I've read, uh, the screening that they held for the Globes was exclusively for the Globes. And maybe since then they've gone off, because it was uh, supposedly also an, un an incomplete cut of the film too. Uh, so they might have gone back to the editing room for a minute before they get it officially ready to package and send out to uh, Directors Guild, BAFTA, a few of the other uh, voting bodies that are still left out there. So I don't have him getting in. If we see, if the support for Dunkirk is there, and we're all underestimating it, this could be where Mark, Mark Rylance gets in. Uh, I think it's really the only hope uh, that Dunkirk has, other than the stunt category, of course. And yeah, I think that's about it for that one. And then for uh, supporting actress, I have, uh, let's see here, alphabetically, Mary J. Blige for Mudbound, Holly Hunter for The Big Sick, Allison Janney for I, Tonya, Laurie Metcalf for Lady Bird, and Octavia Spencer for The Shape of Water. And again, I think those are the five that it's going to come down to here. Um, you know, and the only, again, if, if uh, Holly Hunter does miss tomorrow, though, that will shake my confidence a little bit in her getting a nominee at the Oscars as well. Um, let's see, a couple other ones we can consider here. Um, Tiffany Haddish uh, is one. I was actually kind of shocked also when she did not get in for the Globes yesterday. Um... You know, she won the uh, New York Film Critics Prize for Supporting Actress. She was a nominee at the Critics' Choice for Supporting Actress. Um, so, yeah, those are definitely things to consider there. But missing out of the Globes, I think uh, McCarthy, Melissa McCarthy, I believe, uh, she actually might have missed out of the Globes, too. Hang on. Uh, let me just ch uh, double-check this. I can't remember if she was nominated at the Globes, too, or not. Let's see here. Now, it did get in, uh, looking up here, uh, it did get in for Best Film, uh, Musical, or Comedy, and Kristen Wiig is nominated in the Lead Actress category, but uh, that's one thing to consider. Uh, uh, Melissa McCarthy was not nominated at the Globes either, uh, but she was nominated at SAG, and she was nominated, I believe, at Critics' Choice as well. So, um, so yeah, if, uh, if Tiffany Haddish is on the same train that Melissa McCarthy was uh, all those years ago, 2011, uh, to get one of those five slots, um, then she's going to have to do the same. She's going to have to uh, uh, get nominated here tomorrow, too, 
and um, we'll see uh, if she gets nominated anywhere else. Really, the only other place I can think of would be BAFTA, and I don't necessarily see BAFTA going for that film. Um, yeah, and I, like I've said before, I'm going to pull Mudbound and uh, all the other Netflix films out of contention once we get to the Oscars because of the Netflix bias. Uh, it's not because of anything else to do with the films or the quality or anything. It, I think it's just because the Oscars are not over that, that yet. So maybe Tiffany Haddish takes up the slot left uh, by Mary J. Blige in that case. Uh, let's see here. Who else do I want to mention? Um, let's see here. Uh, Hong Chow got in yesterday for downsizing. Uh, we'll see if maybe she continues on that because, she, again, she got in a Critics' Choice, too. Uh, we'll see. Uh, maybe, yeah, again, if she solidifies a slot here tomorrow, too, then I'll, I'll put her in for the Oscars for sure. But uh, that's one there. Uh, Novitiat uh, from Melissa Leo. I think that one's almost completely done. I think SAG is going to be the last hope for her to get a nomination at the Oscars or anywhere else. Uh, so if she lands here tomorrow, maybe that'll refuel her uh, campaign a little bit. And I think that's going to be it. Yeah. So yeah, if we count them up there, that's uh, four nominations for The Shape of Water. I can easily see that being the leading film tomorrow uh, for total nominations. Uh, the Post will have three with... Uh, uh, with that one. Three Billboards is going to have three. Uh, if I'm right, Call Me By Your Name will have three, and Mudbound will have three as well. So, yeah, and then I have Lady Bird getting two. That could pull for three if it gets in for Film Ensemble. I can see that being a possibility. And occasionally, we do have a nominee here in the Screen Actors Guild um, that, uh, that gets into the Film Ensemble category without any other nomination. Sometimes that does happen. And, um, like, Grand Budapest did that a few years ago. Um, there was another one I was thinking of. Now I can't remember what it was now. Let's see, was it from last year? I think, uh, Hidden Figures, I think, from last year, too, I think. Uh, I'm going to look it up here quickly before I, before I'm done here. Um, I think Hidden Figures, uh, didn't get any nominees, uh, in there for, uh, for individual nominations. I mean, it did, uh, it won, obviously, um. For the uh, uh, the ensemble award. Uh, oh no, no, Octavia was nominated. Okay, uh, but I thought there was another one from last year. I, no, it didn't. Okay, I thought there was another recent example. Maybe I'm just not. Uh, oh, Straight Out of Compton. That's what it was. Yeah, Straight Out of Compton. Maybe that's another reason why Jason Mitchell gets in to make up for his. Uh, you know, because he was not nominated as uh, for an individual award that year either. Uh, for Straight Outta Compton, and he was probably, yeah, one of the best performances in the film. Maybe that's another reason why they go for him for Mudbound, um, to make up for that. Uh, I see that as a possibility. So, uh, yeah, occasionally they do that. If that's going to happen tomorrow, I think then it's Get Out. That's Get Out would get one of those slots, for sure. And if not that one, if not Get Out, then probably the next bet, best bet would probably be Dunkirk then. But uh, I don't know. I think competition is too strong. I think it's just too strong. So yeah, I could, that would be a scenario where I see it. But in that case, then, who do you leave out then? Probably, well, call me by your name. It did underperform. And um, and Mudbound maybe won't go the distance. But I think the other three are, are pretty safe. Uh, three billboards of the post and Shape of Water. I, I, would, I would seriously be surprised if any one of those three did not make it tomorrow. So... Um, yeah, just some food for thought. I know it's starting to make me feel a little uncomfortable here, too, to try to figure out what I'm going to do here. And again, I'll, I'll be kicking myself tomorrow if uh, if I, uh, if I one of these gets in or something. But uh, but hey, you know what? Nobody's perfect at this game, so uh, I'm not going to pretend like I am. Okay. Uh, so yeah, we'll be back again tomorrow with more live reactions for the Screen Actors Guild. And that one, it's always... It's th this is one of the toughest ones to predict, uh, isn't it? So uh, we'll see how I do. But, uh, yep. Yeah. all right. So we will be back again tomorrow. Thanks, everybody, for uh, checking the video out.